Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video. Sean's the name and YouTube's the game today. The million dollar question that so many people are constantly looking for the answer to is what content on YouTube do people actually wanna watch or what are they looking for? And of that content, if I make that content, how will it be seen amongst the other billions of videos that are on the platform? So today I want to dive a little bit into kind of the preliminary research or preliminary time I spend when I figure out what videos I want to actually create on YouTube based on YouTube search terms and the actual competition for those terms. YouTube search volume metrics and YouTube keywords are super important, but before I go any further in this video, we need to hold up for a second. YouTube is a space for you to be you. And if your only goal is to gain more YouTube subscribers or gain more views, then you're not gonna get very far on the platform because a lot of people are gonna tell you're just making content to do that. If you're not actually enjoying the content that you're making, no one else is gonna enjoy watching it for you. So that's one thing you really need to understand. Your primary goal shouldn't be to gain subscribers and views. Your primary goal is to just have a bunch of fun on the platform and for you to be you. The subscribers and the views are gonna come with that and I guarantee you if you have that as a secondary goal, you're gonna grow a lot quicker. But if you're an SEO geek or like an Amazon FBA dude or you're just an online marketer nerd, then this video is for you. This is for those people whose sole purpose is just to drive traffic to a video. Lots of really juicy stuff today. Can't wait to get into it, so let's do it. Alrighty, so before I actually tell you these three strategies I like to use for checking search volume and keyword ranking, uh, I need to kind of tell you just because you can rank a video to the top of a specific search query, it doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna get tons and tons and tons of views on the platform for a few reasons. One, search volume might be pretty low and we'll get into that today, but two, it's actually pretty crazy, but not that many views actually come from the search feature on YouTube and it's totally gonna depend on the type of content and the type of channel that you have. If you've got a how-to based uh, channel or walkthrough type channel or really any channel that's providing people valuable content for them to learn on, then yeah, a lot of your traffic and a lot of your views are gonna come from the search feature. But if you're an entertainment-based channel or someone who's really just trying to provide some sort of comedic value to people or something like that, then a lot of your traffic isn't gonna come from the search feature, it's really gonna come from suggested or sub boxes or what have you. Oh, and then three, it really depends on your channel size and kind of where you're at on your channel. If you've got a massive channel, a lot of your views are gonna come from your subscribers. If you've got a really small channel, then not a lot of people are gonna find your videos from your sub boxes. So it really depends on a lot of factors. But since I've been on YouTube for like ever now and I've got access to so many different channels and I've worked with like over 100 different channels, I took 10 very different channels. We're talking like a gaming channel, a makeup channel, a vlogging channel, 10 very different types of channels and I took all of their analytics and morphed it together and kind of got a little bit of an average on the following statistics. About 32% of all views come from the YouTube search. 34% come from the browse features on YouTube, and then 26% come from suggested videos on the platform. And if you check my math on that, clearly that doesn't add up to 100% because there's a lot of other little traffic sources mixed in there as well. But again, these numbers vary tremendously based on each specific channel. So I highly recommend you actually go into your YouTube analytics right now and actually check what your current traffic looks like and where you're getting all of your views from. But once you do that, let's say you do rely heavily on the search function on YouTube to get a lot of your views, or you just wanna boost the views you get from the search feature, well, then we can get into what we're talking about today. There's three strategies that I like to use that are 100% free and I use all the time to get a better idea of one, what kind of content I should be making, and two, how competitive is that space? Am I just creating a video where there's another billion types of videos just like that and my video is not gonna be seen at all? So we're gonna be talking about three strategies I like to use. Let's do it. 
First and foremost, the most probably popular tool out there is using something like TubeBuddy or vidIQ. I personally recommend vidIQ because I've been using it forever now, like years and years I've been using vidIQ. It's changed a little bit over the years, but it's so good. And they do have a paid version. Um, I actually don't use a paid version. I've got the free version and I love it. It gets you just as much information that you really need without actually nerding out on a ton of different statistics. If you've never heard of vidIQ or you don't use it, I highly recommend you do. I'll leave a link down below to go learn more about it. You can pretty much add it as a Chrome extension, which is what I use. It just shows up right over uh, YouTube and it's honestly so nice. You can do so many things with it. Like it shows you how much search volume a specific term or like phrase gets and also how saturated or how much competition the terms are that are already on YouTube. Plus you get like a ton of cool stats based on that term like top creator and monthly views and whatever and you can dive into all that. It's pretty legit and it's a super simple way to get a more detailed picture or full idea of the content you're about to create or the content you've already created. Like for example, if I wanted to create a video on how to tie a shoe, I would search the term and see that there's an average amount of search volume um, but there's also so much competition that vidIQ gives it an overall low score. So while the volume's decent and there's a decent amount of people actually searching for something like that, the amount of competition and videos that already exist for that is going to make it incredibly hard for your video to actually be seen. To put things into perspective, I try to only create content that has a vidIQ score of over 55. Um, just because it kind of gives you a good gauge of, okay, is there enough volume for this? And is the competition too gnarly? Like, what does it look like? And is it worth it for me to actually make a video on it? And you don't necessarily have to scrap an entire idea. If you see that the score is way too low, you can just alter it or throw a twist on it a little bit. Like if I change my search to how to tie a shoe one-handed, as you can see, my vidIQ score goes up a little bit and the competition is basically non-existent. The only bummer with that is the volume is significantly lower and almost non-existent. So again, it's constantly finding the balance between the two of those to kind of make it worth your while to make a video. And guys, vidIQ is so cool and so amazing. I highly recommend you just go get at least the free version. If you want the paid stuff, the paid stuff, you can do some pretty insane stuff and get some really cool information and analytics out of it. Um, so super awesome. Again, I'll leave a link down below to go check it out. I love vidIQ. Number two is actually something that so many people overlook and it drives me nuts because it is such a powerful tool to use on YouTube. And it's actually something that's already on YouTube based on the search predictions when you're actually typing in something yourself. For example, if I log out of my account to clear like any type of history queries and I search how to, it shows me some of the most popular and current search terms that other people are typing in right now. So those could be really good terms or phrases to create content on, or at least to look more into with like vidIQ or something. Plus you can uh, use a few hidden tricks that a lot of people don't know about. YouTube is obviously owned by Google, so a lot of the search stuff you can do on Google, you can also do on YouTube. Uh, for example, if you play around with searching with like an asterisk or an underscore, I'll let you kind of have fun with that, but it acts like a wild card, so it changes a little bit about your search query and, and gives you more ideas on what kind of content you might be able to make. Again, you're constantly looking for that great balance of there's lots of people looking or searching for something and there's a market for it, but there's really nothing to fill that because there's not enough content to actually fill this search. So that's where you want to step in and provide that kind of content. It can take a little bit of time to find a really good type of content and you're never going to get perfect. You're never going to find something that's going to be super, super high demand and zero content on because obviously there's billions of other people out there who are actually trying to create content as well. Now to go along with number two is the fact that, you know, you can find maybe what people are searching for, but unless you use something like vidIQ, you're not going to actually know how much results it brings back. Now vidIQ does tell you the competition level, but it doesn't tell you how many videos are actually populated for that specific search term, which is pretty important when you're kind of making a decision based on competition. So if you want to know how many videos are actually returned based on a specific search query or search term, YouTube used to show us this right above the search, but they don't do it anymore and you have to get a little bit creative with it. It's pretty simple. All you have to do is just take the term you searched on YouTube, you copy and paste that bad dog to Google, and you just follow it by site colon YouTube.com. Okay, now it's going to show you how many videos populate 
for that specific term on YouTube alone, which is 75,000, and it's actually not bad at all, and that's really why vidIQ said the competition was so great, because it was low. And you can see just how competition exists, because that term has a low competition and there's 75,000 videos for it. So if you were to search like a term gaming on YouTube, you're gonna get 1.75 billion videos that populate for that term. Wow, wow. But those are three free ways to really check out some keyword and search volume metrics on YouTube that a lot of other people aren't really doing. And again, if you're not some crazy online marketer guru nerd dude, then you really can just get away with using all of the free stuff and you don't really need to use anything that's paid because there's a lot of paid features out there. If you do want something a little bit more high-end, I do recommend you just pretty much pay for vidIQ, get lots of really good stuff out of there. Or one other paid feature that I'll just sneak into this video real quick is something that I just started recently using and I love it and I've been nerding out on it, but again, I'm kind of like one of those nerd online marketer dudes, so you probably wouldn't find too much use out of it but it's called Keywords Everywhere. And the main reason I actually use this is because it kind of gives me a lot of search volume metrics and cost per click stuff uh, for Google and for Amazon, and that's like the primary use for it, but it also gives me stuff for YouTube, which is just kind of a bonus when I'm making content like this. It's pretty sweet, maybe worth checking out, but if you do end up doing a ton of searches every single month or every single day or week or whatever, uh, you're gonna spend a ton of money on Keywords Everywhere because it does charge you kind of per search term that you do, um, and each search pulls up a bunch of different listings. So you gotta look into it, it can get pretty expensive, but again, if you're just looking to grow a YouTube channel and that's your only focus, not to drive sales or do anything like that, then I highly recommend you just use those three strategies they talked about today, save yourself some money, and get your content seen. That's ultimately the name of the game, but that's my answer to this million dollar question that so many people are always asking or wondering. You know, if you wanna get your content seen, you need to create content that a lot of people are searching for, but also the competition is pretty low so your content can actually be seen. These three tools will allow you to do that for free. Highly recommend you use them. If you found some use out of this video, I would really appreciate it. You can hit that like button. Also subscribe if you're new around here. I'm always dropping a ton of free knowledge like this as well because again, we all love saving some money and getting our content seen. So again, if you enjoyed the video, also drop me a comment and uh, hopefully you learned something new. Otherwise, Later.